You're now locked onto the Pulse Radio Show with Marcus Myers, X Tina, and Ken Pyle. And on the one and twos, Big Red the DJ. It's the Pulse Radio Show, baby. Believe that. Yeah, Marcus. Yeah. Bumping already, though. Yeah, bumping already. Yeah. <laughs> bumping already, though. Bumping already. Bumping already. I'm like, who's no, that? Headphones all over here. Yeah, man. So, you know, every week, we always like to highlight the local talent. Yeah, every single week. Uh, Marcus, I, I believe you have a good finding in, in today's guest, tonight's guest. Yeah, I, I understand, my brother. I mean, this is the mind that, if, you, if you're a major rapper, I've not worked with this man. What are you doing? What are you doing? I mean, this is the person that's behind Tess Vibe Like You. The body that's behind Island Levy's Complicated Women. He has done beats for men like Don Q, other international rappers like Dave East, Rob Stone. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Pulse Radio Show, Mr. Chris Rose. Mr. Chris Rose, man. <laughs> what are you saying? Look <laughs> for <laughs> Hello, good night. Hello, good night. Hi, good night. I produce some hit songs, you know. Just he's never mind cool. me. <laughs> he's he's real like, nice to me. You see him? You're just sad, you might. <laughs> what are you saying, my Chris man? I'm funny, thank you. Man, I, I feel I feel great, man. First thing, thanks for giving me this beat. This beat is so hard. Yeah, I, yeah. We can use this when you go on. <laughs> Let you know for sure. Um, yeah, man. Listen, we hear your name all the time. If we hear certain rappers, we hear your name is associated with what they've done. And you are the person behind the beat, behind the vibe. Um, we had to bring you in. I just get and um, pick your brain, man. But first, I want to start out and ask you how you started um, and uh, how you really got into rap. Um, I was banned from rap till I was like sixteen. You were banned from listening to listening it. Listening to rap. Oh yeah. wow! <laughs> wow. Anything to do with it, like Air Force, all that stuff. No, no hip hop culture no, at all. That was just my parents because um. <laughs> I don't know if you remember, I used to play piano in school. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 still yeah. So I was just classically trained, just doing, maybe I was um, just playing piano all the time, stuff like that. And my parents just didn't think rock was a good influence. Yeah. So, you know, when they left Barbados is when I started to listen to rock. Wait, this is the wrong way, Ish. Did it mean what, what year? What year? When they left? No, what, what year that you that your parents were saying it was a bad influence? He said, up, 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 like, up until he was 16. Like, up, literally, so he was 16. So that's, like, that's like, what, 2000 and... Well, let me say... That's like the 50 Cent era. Around 50 cents. Um, Coyne graduation. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, well, man, no, that's... No, for, for her, though, only 2010, probably. So... Man, that's when rap changed, though. When rap wasn't necessarily guys. So, wait, sorry, let me be. understand. It's 2010 when you were, when you started to listen, when you were able to... 20, yeah. Okay, right. All right, okay, okay. okay right, so, anything that before sense. that... Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Because yeah, that makes sense. then when, I guess, nerd rap became a bit more... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And guys, the rap kind of was... kind of phased out a bit. It's kind of uncool. Yeah. Yeah, Walking around with the guy it's not cool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Go to college. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Go to class. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you see what you're saying. So you said uh, 2000, in 2010 is when you kind of started getting into it. But what made you really, you know, transition from the piano to, to the rap beats? Um, I didn't like playing piano. I didn't like performing. I didn't like playing any instruments like that. So when I went away, I went away from using digital media. Mm. And I met a lot of people that were really making beats and stuff like that. So mm. one of the people that was in residence with me, <coughs> He was making beats, uh, and he just kind of taught me because I was making beats on Logic first, just for mm. fun, and then he taught me Fruity Loops and all type of stuff. Right, so, right. You know. So, so you you went from Logic to Fruity Loops yeah. and not the other way around. Yeah. Why? Um, because I had a map, so um, I didn't know how to get like um Fruity yeah. Loops on map back then or anything like that. So I was just making like the really trashy drum songs and you know, just making <laughs> stuff like that, or whatever. <laughs> It didn't sound good, but then he showed me Fruity Loops and everything just sounded like everything on the radio. You so know? you're currently still using Fruity Loops? Like yeah. This beat you did this on Fruity Loops? Fruity Loops 10, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's where you, that's wow. really where you kind of, um, have done all your beats, like whether it's Violet You, yeah, everything, everything, is, everything Fruity is Fruity Loops. Loops. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So what, what made you keep, um, I guess keep going at it, keep, uh, pursuing, uh, the rap beats, etc.? I have no idea, man. Um, <laughs> cause it wasn't working at first, like 2011, 2013. I, nobody was really like paying me any attention or anything like that. I tried to send people beats and they just weren't messing with me. Yeah. And then um, I don't even know what placement changed it, but something happened. I just kept doing it. Yeah, I, I, cause I honestly I remember when you first started out and when you were like doing like I, I think were you doing like like some Kanye remixes and stuff too. Um, my uh, 
The only old Kanye remix is the only Facebook. That's like 2009, though. Right, I remember. Th- I remember that, that time. That, that that wasn't even like free loops. That's virtual DJ. <laughs> 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 but I remember all back then, and, and and when I saw you keep doing it, and you kept you kept progressing and getting better and better and better, and and your name it got more recognized. It really made me wonder, like, what made you keep keep going at it and going at it and keep pushing, pushing, pushing. Is that, is that you wanted to get to a certain like level, like what is international status or something? Um, no, I think like um, I guess I'm, I'm decent at making beats, right? So I Ma, you're not right. decent, man. You're right. good. You're good. You're right. good. Dave, you're Dave good. says I'm, different. I'm all right, but I feel that like I can make a living off of it, right? right? So I just thought like if you put a hundred percent your effort into it, then you for sure gonna make some money out of it, mm. and that's just how it's been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ever since. Yeah, I gotta ask you, who is that? Did that drop? Chris Rose give me the reason. That's from a song on um a mixtape that I did like 2016. And um, that, that's just part of the song. All right, and they just cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. Well, okay. Uh, there is something that I want to ask you, right? Because you are the person that I guess you are. You are the how should I say the the maestro, and then the the rapper then has to go on your beat. What is going on with rap nowadays, boss? <laughs> what is happening with these rappers, me? Everybody is yeah 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 yeah. That's lit, What's up? Um, yeah. What what is lit? That's I thought that there was a po- poetic element to rap. You don't miss even, lyrics. Not even. Like, they like, all um, lean. I feel like you could <laughs> even look at the voice as like an instrument. Yeah. Know, another VST, and that that's where they're winning. You know, like they can fill in those pockets, those melodies. I mean, you know, like think of it. Where they're not like fifteen little Uzi verbs. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. There's only one, mm-hmm. and that's because he knows what melodies fit what what fits on what beat etc like that and i think like that's the genius in being able to transcend the mumble rap category right you know what i mean is the just your ability to understand how the music is working because a lot of people anybody can go over and just mumble over anything right it's only crap let me let me bring it back to barbados i mean you're one of the premium hip-hop producers now what do you think about the current state of of local hip-hop is it something that you find is competitive or do you think it's lacking do you think it's boring outside of what you're doing obviously um, in terms of the scene in general, yeah, I mean, there's never really been a scene scene for hip hop. Um, Taff held his on um, late festival, I think this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, right, that, right. that was probably the, that was the great. biggest thing for hip hop again right. in a while. In a, in a minute, you remember the hip hop festival? I was not gonna right. say yeah. if you were right because that yeah. that was during your ban. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, like, yeah, 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 all festival. jokes to say, yeah, I knew some guys who were connected to that, so there was a hip hop festival. I found though, um, it wasn't as large. So then it was, it, to me, it was still more within that local hip hop community. Yeah. So unless you were not directly connected to any of those persons, you wouldn't necessarily have known. But, you know, they used to have freestyle competitions, all sorts of things. And it was actually, it was pretty good, but it was still withheld into that community. So Taft did a good thing. That Moonlight Festival was, had a little bit of a further reach, I found. So yeah. you guys should keep pushing those kinds of things. Yeah. But do you think that do you think that in Barbados that they get the credit they deserve though the the rappers whether it's the Levy or the the Tef or um even Ruby Tech and and those guys? What do you mean by credit? Oh. When I say credit, I mean what they're doing. They're making great songs, right? And you're making beats that are you know. But if you take them overseas, people people like them, mm-hmm. right? But do you think that you get, see that same amount of recognition here from Beijing? Personally, I don't see recognition anywhere. I'm surprised people know who I am, <laughs> but um. <laughs> I feel like it's picking up now, you know, with, um, right. with the same Nick and um, Tef, Rico, mm-hmm. um, Rico, everybody. It, it feels like um, now because they come, the internet has made like, the world so much smaller, right? Yeah. So before to be a rapper, you know, you had an AR, A&R, had a fly down here, yeah. listen to you, blah, 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 blah. But basically, you can put anything on the internet and blow up or get a fan base or anything like that. So I feel like recognition here isn't really a big deal mm-hmm. anymore. Mm-hmm. I feel like you should just be trying to do as best as you can. Yeah. Are there certain rappers that you prefer to work with? Um, no, I really want to pay me. I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, but you, you, I see that your name is connected to a lot of lyrical guys, though. Like, even though we talk about the Mambo rappers just now, you, you, you more have guys that have a lot of lyrical content. Is that a preference of yours, or is it just that they've never got any money? Those are one star <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't really make a difference to me. You know, you, know, mm. you could be lyrical. You could say one word. If it's lit, it's lit. Yeah, yeah. Defi- I want you to define lit for me. Uh, <laughs> lit. 
<laughs> so, so with you, okay. What do, with you personally? What kind of rap do you like? Do you do you like the more lyrical? Do you like the more lit kind of stuff? The the vibes. I, I mean, I have a playlist that goes from everything from like Gangstar to the same Uzi Vert. So right, it mm-hmm. doesn't really make a difference. Doesn't make a difference. Yeah. It's just what sounds good yeah. that hits you. Yeah. Who you feel is the best? The best rapper in Barbados. Me. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> uh, but okay, so who, but in Barbados though, I don't know. I feel as though. Do you think that there are enough like producers like for for everybody like you know whether it's Tef, whether it's Rico, whether it's um um I um Island Levy. I don't see a lot of uh, producers. There are a bunch of producers, but that's the thing. Like we're so used to like not having any attention on us or whatever mm-hmm. that we just do our work mm-hmm. and, you know it's not a big deal there are people like um, NFA John he produced a bunch of Rico Maserati stuff a mm-hmm. bunch of Alien Levy stuff you never know that yeah. you know what I'm saying and um, there's Josh Halen there's um, there's a bunch of people in Barrios who make beats and make beats for great songs but just because they, you know the producer you're not going to be seen so mm-hmm. you know are you a beat maker or are you a producer um, right now, I'm just making beats. I haven't really done any production with anybody, but back in the day, like Complicated Woman. Yeah. yeah it was mm-hmm. definitely. Oh, that was you? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Nice. So, okay, so, but I want to talk about now the, the international, um, internationally acclaimed rappers that you, you have gotten on your, some of your beats. How did that happen? Like, with Dave East and Don Q? Networking. Networking. Like, um, if I know somebody, I know somebody, I know somebody, mm-hmm. then they'll play the beat for them, and then it works. Really. But the thing is, these are men that like live in St. Lucie that we can just say that like, I know a man. No, man. Like, I used to live in um, I used to live in Niagara, so okay. it's, not, it's not even far to get to the United States or anything. Mm-hmm. Right. So a lot of the people that I knew that produced, they the ones in Canada, they were going to New York all the time, LA all the time for sessions and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So. You know, just knowing people right. kind of help. That's really Did you actually meet them? Never. Never. I've never met anybody. <laughs> really? I swear, I swear. Yeah. So how did you know that your um, beat was chosen for the mix? I, I didn't. That's the thing. You, know, like, you wake up and they <laughs> <show> <laughs> the track is there. <laughs> yeah. it's, Seriously? No, I swear, I swear. I can show you so many DMs that you're asking people, like, did they produce that? So I don't want to get into like, like, uh, like the payment plan or anything, but when they, when you do that, is that you, they pay you for a beat and then maybe they will use it. No, sometimes they like mixtapes. Like, so let's say I want to work with somebody. I don't know who's the upcoming, like, Blockboy JB or something. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I would just send him a bunch of beats just because I want to work with him. I may not get paid off of that because it's a mixtape or whatever. Okay. It's the only when it comes to like singles or albums. The albums and mm-hmm. like, that's when like, the contracts and the lawyers and oh. all the crap. So, do, do we have anything um, else coming up with, with Don Q, Davies, anything? Um. Uh, it was totally been told about it, so I guess. I right. <laughs> <laughs> that song positive. <laughs> that's no, I mean that's a good that's thing. A good thing. <laughs> but but it seems that your name is getting in um, a lot of um, major circles. I hope so. You hope so. When you net when you network, um, what is what what is usually associated with your name and the Chris Rose name and the beats? Like, how are people talking about you overseas? I don't know. I don't <laughs> nothing. Know. There's nothing you hear. Like, I, don't know. I really don't know. Like I said, all of this, like people interviewing me, stuff, it, it's stuff that you really don't expect. Really? Yeah. yeah. Just made music. Do people ask for a certain type of beat? Like, do they ask for something simple or like how would they how would they come to you saying that they have a, a, something in mind? And they want you to do something for it. No, people just say it won't be. That's it. Yeah. yeah that's no one it. has any like specifications, yeah. preferences. No. Because who you're influenced by, like you know, whether it's like Kanye West and those guys, they have a lot of instrumentation in there. They have a lot of stuff. But I'm hearing a lot of this, um, like simplification in these newer beats from you know the newer rappers. So how do you know like which rapper would want what? It's just simply you wake up, you do a beat, and then you just. Sure, all day in the ether, and eventually somebody picks it up. Yeah, you know, like, I guess it's whatever vibe they're feeling. You're right. Yeah, yeah. because the like, Metro Woman just put on two, like, Afro beat songs on his album. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some, you know, a little bit offset singing. You would mm-hmm. never sing a, send a, like, an Afro beat to offset. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, so I guess it's just, you know, send. what you send, might send, feel. Yeah, yeah, send whatever and the hop on. I mean, that is what music yeah. is, though. It's like what you feel. So it's yeah. like when, when you hear something and it catches you, like, Literally, when Red put this on, I was like, wait, what's this? <laughs> like, you know, you'll, you'll either feel it or you won't. So, 
I guess that's how it works. Uh, how, how do you choose, like, when you're listening to songs? Because I know you would have a different ear than the average person, right? Mm-hmm. So when you're listening to instrumentals and tracks, what is it that you look for in the beat to say that it, it's good or it's well, you know, well done or something, or it's inspiring for you? I don't know if it's lit. I don't know what I'm saying. Like, um, because um, I don't know how to explain. Like, with beats, like, I pick them and don't know. Like, I, like, listen for, like, oh, this is what he used. Yeah. This is the pattern that like, he draws the drums here. And, right. Like, this is only sphere. That type of stuff. So, yeah, that's kind of annoying. But making beats it makes you kind of respect all beats. You know what I just realized? You don't, re- do you still enjoy music, like, the way that the average person would? Because it seems like no, you would not be nitpicking to kind of see why he put that there, why he do that, why he didn't put that, in, he could have yeah, added some flutes in yeah, there. Yeah, do you listen with like a different kind of air? I mean, like contemporary things, you know, like things that just came out. But like if I'm just listening to stuff like, you know, Anita Baker or something like that, mm-hmm. yeah. then, you know, I'm just listening to music. But yeah. like if new stuff comes out, I'm trying to pick it down to see what I can do better or what can make me better so mm-hmm. I can mm-hmm. appeal to that. Right. Or that, you know? Do you try to go with the flow or do you make the flow? The flow that's been a lot of so when the, so when the, when the new trends come out, whether it's the new like whether it's Metro Boomin or one of these big guys or Zaytoven or one of these guys, mm-hmm. do you try to mimic what they're doing and follow the trend, or do you try to hear what they're doing and say, you know what, I'm gonna go this direction and make something that could probably be better than what they're doing? No, I just do my own thing. Yo, yeah, you don't really, you don't really follow the beat pattern of, of the, the latest trends in, in uh, instrumentals and stuff. Think, I don't, to me, it doesn't make sense because then you just have a bunch of copycats. Yeah. So mm-hmm. even if my beat isn't as hard as the, you know, a copycats thing, then it, it's still for good for myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I just feel that it's a lot of copycats nowadays, though. I ain't gonna lie. Like, these new guys, it just seems like, be, I don't know if... Live instrumentation is is is, is sometimes for me feels non-existent in rap. I'm glad you said that because I mean you you are classically trained. Um, yeah. How, how do you find putting live instrumentation in, in modern hip hop versus just a fully synthesized beat? Um, I mean, it's, it's neither here. Nor, I mean, it makes it a lot you know more full. It makes it a lot more interesting. It's always cool to see like what direction. I just mean considering your background, is it something that you would be well, into? Um. Like I said, I never like doing classical music at all. Like, <laughs> up to grade eight, I hated it. So it's not something I would go out of my way to do, but I'm sure they um if somebody wanted it implemented into right. their stuff, mm-hmm. it would. So you still use some of those techniques that you would have learned um in classical? I guess second nature, but not like I don't train like, not not yeah. You okay. won't be you won't be the next um, Beethoven or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Beethoven no. rap rapper kinda. Of. No. So who's who are some people that you would want to work with? I don't say whoever is paying. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's true. No man, no man. Like, what about what about Drake and and you know um, all these guys like Future and uh, Migos. I mean, and, like you know, like every producer would say that. But you know, yeah. like, I want to work with Kanye. I want to work with Migos. All that. Yeah. But it, I just realize that like, placements don't really mean anything unless you're getting paid, mm-hmm. and that to me has been. The, the most important thing for me so far this year is to get paid before right. anything else. Yeah. Because you could produce a bunch of songs and be broke. Mm-hmm. That yeah. doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. So does it happen does it happen in a way that I remember when I remember Joe Budden said that there's a lot of times when, you know, people is what like tear a beat. Like you know how you give out a lot of beats mm-hmm. and then they go on a mixtape or whatever, they end up on an album. And it's like, the, and then you're supposed to be compensated, but people forget to compensate the producer. That's when you have a good lawyer. You have a lawyer? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. But that's never happened to you before, though. People always pay you. Um, yeah, for the album tracks, the next days, I'm pretty sure I'm still yeah. doing yeah, Like, yeah, Tevin's yeah. like, pay. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my man, Tev, man. Okay, so who are some of the producers, like, right now, like, top five producers, you would say, that are really running the game? Like the game. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. right the game. Uh Weezy Turbo, Cardo. I have no idea who that is. Say. Yeah, I know Salsa. <laughs> um I don't really have a number for you, but those four listen to him. What do you think about Youngberg? You mean from ever since? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, but, but he's still being produces now, but his name is um Hitmaker. I can't remember. Hitmaker, Hitmaker yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You like him? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? It's just normal. Then he made like Nicki Minaj, like 
he made he makes more R and B. Yeah, he made Black Chinese song. Yeah, yeah. but he makes more Ty Dolla Sign. Um, I love yeah. Ty. Dolla I love Ty Dolla Sign too. How come you never went into like say like R and B? Well, have you gone into R and B at all? Uh, I can't remember. You know, probably not, but obviously not if you can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was doing, um, I was doing an album together. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Yeah, but how come you, you haven't, like, dabbled into, like, you know, other genres and, you know, you, you mean, you're in the land of soccer, man. I, man, I don't want to get kicked off the radio station with soccer. It's like my least favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and that has been... <laughs> <laughs> you for the day. Yeah. I, I want to get into the some soccer production for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, or at least they sit in on a session or just see mm-hmm. the, you know what I mean, how it's me. But I don't go to my way to play so yeah. Right. Again, that's not a deliberate path. Right. Yeah. Okay. But if you want to get your foot in the dirt, this is the man to talk to. This is the <laughs> red is the guy. Red, the guy, man. He's the guy. <laughs> red is the guy. He's a plug. <laughs> red is the plug. <laughs> Uh, Chris, thanks for coming through, man. Thanks yeah, for coming through. Um, what 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 could we look forward to from you? More beats, hey. more beats. <laughs> more not, from like for any artists that we could be looking forward to. You got anything with um Levy that we ain't here yet? Tef we ain't here yet? No, I mean, okay, you could look out for um NFA Jones stayed on too. That's my boy. He's dropping the tape. I think in January. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I was gonna have one. Um, he's saying Levy, Tef, Crop Soldier. Um, okay. All those people. So that, that's what's coming out. Oh, okay. Sight. Yeah, okay, that's, that's crazy. Cool. But me, I'm not doing nothing. You should yeah. do Bashma Soka, though. Bashma Soka, man, that got I lyrical have content. I Bashma Soka beats. I'm not going to lie to you. I have Bashma Soka. Nah, are <laughs> oh, you for now? Like, no, man. No, <laughs> plug, plug that in now, man. Uh, <laughs> nah, you should get into Bashma Soka, though. That's an easy transition, B. I was thinking about it, but it's so, like, I think, like, the Soka, like, atmosphere is so hard to, like, navigate. You've always said you're welcome, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Hey, here's the plug. <laughs> yeah. Anytime you want to do Bashma Soka, anytime you want to get into Soka, Red is the mind that will just put your foot in your door. So that's, that's my plug note. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. So, right. <laughs> Chris, thanks for coming through, and we'll really be looking forward to anything that you're doing. Um, you're really doing some amazing things. Um, and I really hope that these um international the um rappers pay you. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for talking. Have a good one.